Praise the Lord. Lord, I do need you now. I thank you for the victory. Thank you for the worship. Thank you for your sweet presence. We give you praise. We give you glory. Now decrease me and increase yourself that people will hear from heaven. We need you, Lord. We believe. In Jesus' name. Isaiah 43, beginning at verse 1, says, but now. Can you say, but now? I don't say it like you mean it. But now, but now. thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they should not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou should not be burned, neither should flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I, have, I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore I will give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. And everyone that is called by my name, I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I made him. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations gather together and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified. Or let them hear that, let them hear and say it is truth. You are my witnesses, said the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, there was no God formed, neither should there be after me. I, even I am, mm, I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and have saved. I have showed and when there was no strange God among you. Therefore, you are my witnesses, said the Lord, that I am God. Mm. Yea, before the day was, I am he. And there was none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Thus said the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake, I sent to Babylon and have brought down all their nobles and Chaldeans, who cries in the ship. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea, and a path in mighty waters, which bring forth the chariots and horses, the armies and powers. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are as stink and quench as toad. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing now, and it shall spring forth, yea, it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness, mm, in the river, and the desert. Let me give you a little background. The children of Israel went through a cycle with God. They would worship God, then they would fall back and go after other gods. They would repent, God would forgive them, then they'd go back in that cycle, going after other gods. So, so God got tired of it, and they went into exile. Ten tribes went to, under the exile of Assyria, two tribes went to exile of Babylon. Now God is getting ready to bring them out. But he said, I'm going to do a new thing this time. And that new thing, it doesn't show it there, but, but I believe that new thing is the new covenant that's coming in the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. 
But God says he's going to do a new thing. So I want to give you five things to look for or to expect when God is doing a new thing. Is God doing a new thing in your life? Are you ready for a new thing in your life? Five things to look for or to expect when God is doing a new thing. And if you let me preach it like I feel it, I know you're going to be blessed. Amen? Amen. Every year bring about new experiences, new friends, and new opportunities, new opportunities and new encounters with Christ. God himself will bring new dimensions and new territories in your life. We three months into the new year, and I want to ask, have you done your three weeks reflection yet? Have you reflect back since December 31st? Is there any freshness or is there any spiritual growth since December 31st? Because before you know it, December 31st will be here again. Is there any freshness? Is there any spiritual maturity? Or are we gradually let some old habits and fears and thoughts creep back in? Is there any spiritual maturity? Got to understand that a baby does not stay a baby. Amen? Each day, each day, each year bring about change. Have you asked yourself, why did I even come to church? Have you asked yourself, why did I even come to church? And I pray that you come, that you may mature in the Lord, that you may draw closer to Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. We often hear that God is doing a new thing. But I like to think, Pastor Mickey, that, that God is doing the same thing, just in a new way. Amen? Same thing, just in a new way. Because Jesus Christ the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. It had always been God's plan to reconcile man unto himself, that man may, may realize their full potential in Christ. In other words, what Adam lost in the garden, Jesus gave it back on the cross. What Adam lose in the garden, Jesus gave it back on the cross. Hallelujah. Help us, Jesus. So, brothers and sisters, as we journey through this new year, through 2023, and as time catches up with destiny, I want to give you five things to look for when God is doing a new thing in your life. Are you ready? Yes. Let's do it. So the first of all, that the timing will be perfect. Second, that God will reaffirm his saints. Third, that God will affirm his faithfulness to accomplish all that concerns you. Fourth, that God, that, that, fourth is expect mighty wonders, signs, and miracles beyond reasoning. And fifth, God expects you to walk through the plan without fear. God expects you to walk through the plan without fear. Are you ready? Hallelujah. So let's talk about the perfect of time. The timing will be perfect. And we know that God's timing is always perfect. It might not be the perfect time for you, but God's timing is perfect. Whether you agree or not, whether you're ready or not, God is always on time. Amen. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So it says, but now. I like that. But now. But now. Not last year, not last week, not next year, not last month, not a minute ago, but now. But now. God is not going to start you on a new trek or a new journey when your life is full of turmoil, frustration, and confusion. It's going to be too much for you to handle. He has to sell you, just like he says in first people. Peter chapter 5, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he will exalt you in due season. It drops down to verse 10 and says that the God of all grace, once you have suffered a little while, that, 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 that he will strengthen you and settle you. Central strengthen you and settle you. So let's look at the perfect timing of God. The Bible says in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son born of a virgin. Perfect timing of God. The Bible said when the day of Pentecost has fully come, God sent the Holy Spirit, God's perfect timing. He said, while Shepherd was watching and Magi was traveling, the Christ child was born. We're talking about the perfect timing of God. While Paul was riding down the Damascus road to destroy the church, the voice of Jesus said, Paul, Paul, why, 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 why persecute thou me? And knock him, on his, knock him off his horse, turn his life around, the perfect timing of God. Baby Moses flowing down the Nile River. And Pharaoh's daughter just happened to be out there bathing. We're talking about the perfect timing of God. The timing of God, the perfect timing of God is always perfect. Amen. So in other words, when you're operating in the perfect timing of God, there is no time to procrastinate. 
This is not a time to try to second guess God, whether God is real. Yesterday is gone. Last year is no more. Tomorrow is not promised. But what? But now. But now. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe you're starting. Maybe things are starting to come together for you now. Maybe you're starting to see a little light through the tunnel. Maybe the kids are grown and out the house and you save a little money now. Talk about but now. Maybe you just completed some challenging task and your confidence level is up. But now. But now, since you've been through faith training, since you've been through spiritual boot camp, I'm talking about but now. But now, since you have some spiritual foundation. But now, since you've been through COVID-19. But now. But now. But now, since you're part of the DLA family and you're receiving some truth now. But now. Amen. But now. See, you, you, see, you see, you've been through, you've been through things before and you, and you failed. Or maybe you're going through something right now. Or went through something last year. But it's a new day now. But now. You've been through the floods and turmoil, tur turmoil before and panic. But now. You've been through the fires of temptation before and failed miserably. But now. You didn't know how to pray then, but now. You know how to pray now. Yeah. You didn't know how to call on the name of Jesus, but now. You can say Jesus, 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 but now. You didn't know that this can't come out by prayer and fasting, but now. Mm. But now since you realize that, that he is God of the second and third and the fourth chances, but now. But now. Now since you know him as Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Since you know him as Jehovah Nisi, our banner. Since you know that Jehovah Shalom, our peace, but now. But now. Hallelujah. Now is the time to get serious with God and to come into your purpose. So the timing will be perfect. Amen. So God will, the second that God will reaffirm his saints. And I tell you, I found, I found that brother Simon that if you allow the world to define you, it can confine you. If you allow the world to define you, it can confine you. If the world tells you all you're going to be is a drug addict, then what? All you're going to be is a drug addict. If the world tells you that you're not, never going to amount to nothing, and you sell for that, what? You're never going to amount to anything. But if you let God define you, God said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. That you're more than a company. If you let God define you, you'll find that you're the head and not the tail. Amen. So God will come along and reaffirm his saints. Hmm. A lack of faith can delay divine destiny. Not knowing who and whose you are can lead you to defeat and devastation. Life sometimes beats you down. Sometimes it beats us down, Sister Janet. Life can beat you down. But God will come along and reaffirm his saints. The way of the world can distract you. The way the world can distract you and lead you off, lead you off. But you got to understand that we're not of this world. We're in this world. We're not of this world. First John chapter 2 says, love not the world. These are the things that are in the world. For all that's in the world is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And it's passing away. But God will come along and reaffirm his saints. This world can discourage you from moving forward. Insecure people can sometimes hinder your progress. Non-believing family members can hinder God's work in your life. But God will reaffirm you. Yeah, he will reaffirm you when he's ready to do a new thing in your life. It's right there in verses 1 through 4. It's, it said that you were created by God. You were formed by God. You were redeemed by God. You were called by God. You were named by God. You were escorted through the storms of life by God. You were saved by God. You were ransomed by God. You were honored by God. You were loved by God. He comes and reaffirms his saints. Hallelujah, Jesus. Saints, you got to understand this. You got to understand it's, it's crucial. It's crucial that you know who you are in Christ. It's crucial that you know who you are in Christ. Yes. It's crucial that you know how the Father looked at you. He don't look at that, that old saint, that, 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 that old person that, that, that messed up a thousand times. He don't look at you. When he look at you now since you saved, he look at you through the eyes of Jesus. He look at the newness. If any man be in Christ, 
He is what? A new creature. So when God looking, he looking at you through the eyes of Jesus. Help us, Lord. Mm -hmm. When God affirms you, you can walk in your destiny. You can dwell in your purpose. When God affirms you, you can dwell in your purpose. He that dwells in the secret place of the most high, most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. When God affirm, when God reaffirms his saints, God will reaffirm his saints. In other words, don't let this world give you spiritual amnesia. Don't let this world give you spiritual amnesia. Don't you know who you are? Don't you know who you are? Don't let this world tell you that, 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 tell you that Christ, God and Christ is irrelevant, that your word is useless, that the word of God is useless. Don't let this world tell you that. The word of God will give you life. The word of God will give you joy. The word of God will give you power. The word of God will take you where you want to go. Don't allow this world to give you spiritual amnesia. Mm. God, we affirm it, son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we affirm He says in verse 5. He says, fear not. Verse 5 says, fear not, for I am with you. And if God is with you, hallelujah, if God is for you, then who can be against you? If God is for you, who what army can destroy you? If God is for you, who can deny you? What force can deny you? He said, behold, I'm with you. That's what he said in verse 5. In other words, Emmanuel, God with you. So family, so DLA, God is ready to do a new thing with this church. God is ready to do a new thing with you. Are you willing? Are you ready? Are you obedient? God is ready to do a new thing with DLA, with you personally, with us as a church, as believers. He is saying, don't worry about the resource. Don't worry about the resource. Don't worry about access. You got access. Because Romans 5 said you've been justified by faith. Now you have peace with God. Then you can come boldly to his throne Amen. of grace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ah. Just know who you are. You just got to know who you are. You just got to know who you are. You got to walk in who you are without fear. You got to walk into your purpose. In other words, God is saying, press toward the mark of the high calling of Jesus Christ. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Don't look back. Don't look back. But look towards the hill which comes your help. Knowing all your help come from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. But God will reaffirm his saints. Let's see it. Remember King David, when King David doubted his strength and felt defeated, God told him to pursue them and recover all. Remember the disciples after Jesus' death? After Jesus' death, they didn't know what to do. So Peter says, I'm going fishing. Peter said, I'm going fishing. Understand this, that when you don't grow in the Lord, you return to the familiar. When you don't grow in the Lord, you will return to the familiar. So Peter said, I'm going fishing. I'm, that's all I know. I'm going fishing. And what happens? Here comes Jesus walking on the shores of Galilee. <laughs> Brother Jerry, right? Jesus comes walking on the shores of Galilee. On, on Galilee. He say, brothers, have you caught any fish? <laughs> brothers, have you caught any fish? Peter said, master, we've been tarred all night and caught nothing. Tarned all night and caught nothing. Pacing the floor all night and caught nothing. Wearing all day and caught nothing. Manipulating all day long and caught nothing. But he said, but cast your net on the other side. Master, didn't you hear me? Tarned all night and caught nothing. But cast your nets on the other side. And what he say, nevertheless, at your will. Oh, when you have a nevertheless mentality. Amen. Nevertheless. Amen. Nevertheless. At your will. Mm, when you have a nevertheless mentality. When you have a nevertheless mentality, you can walk in new zeal. When you have a nevertheless mentality, you can serve with new joy. You can walk in expectancy. Lord, there's giants in the land, but nevertheless. Lord, there's not enough money in the bank, but nevertheless, I don't feel like preaching today. I don't feel like hearing any preaching today, but nevertheless, 
nevertheless, I'm catching hell today. Everywhere I go, I'm catching hell. But nevertheless, I'm going to cast my net on the other side. I'm going to hold on to your hand. I'm going to cast my net. I'm going to hold on to your hand. Nevertheless, we have a nevertheless mentality. God, we reaffirm his saints. Positive affirmation is needed. That's why I love being in this church. Every brother I see, they're always encouraging me. We encourage each other with word, with scripture. That's what you got to do, Sam. You got to encourage each other. You got to pray for each other. Positive affirmation that, that, that keeps us in that nevertheless mentality. I feel like going on. I know I'm not defeated. Nevertheless. And it's the third thing that God will affirm his faithfulness to accomplish the new thing. Oh, God will affirm his faithfulness to accomplish the new thing in your life. Understand that God is faithful even when you're not faithful. God is faithful. Even when you're disobedient, God is still faithful. He says in verse 10, that you may know and believe me. And I'm, I'll tell you that if you don't believe God by now, I feel sorry for you. If you don't trust God by now, I feel sorry for you. That's no hope for you. I believe and I know that he is God. I know it because I'm standing here, a changed man. I believe and I know that he's God. Hallelujah. He says, you should believe me that you may know and believe me. Lord, I believe. I believe, but help my unbelief. Mm. I believe but help my own unbelief. And David said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Paul said, I just want to know him for the fellowship of his suffering and for the power of his resurrection. God will affirm his faithfulness. Not that he has to, but he desires to. He desires to. Mm. You got to understand this, church. Understand this. Get this, get this clear. You have two real enemies in this world. All them other people, for you wrestle not against flesh and blood. You got two real en enemies in this world. That's Satan and you. Satan and you. It's your two enemies. True enemies. Hallelujah. Satan and you. And understand this, that, understand this, that, that, that Satan cannot curse you, but you can curse yourself. Satan can't curse you, but you can curse yourself. Hmm. So whose report are you going to believe? Whose report are you going to believe? Yours that I'm nothing, I'm nobody, I can't do nothing right? Satan report that I got my grip in you and, and I got not going to let you go? Or God's report that you belong to him? That you can do all things through Christ that strengthen you? That I got a plan for you? A plan of good and not of evil to prosper you? Whose report are you going to believe? Look at it. He says in verse 1, he reaffirmed himself. Verse 1, he said, thus said the Lord, I redeem you, I call you. Verse 2 said, I will be with you. Verse 3, I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. He liked that so much, he said it twice. He said it in verse 15, I am God, the Holy One of Israel. <laughs> verse 4, he said, I love you. Verse 5, he said, I will bring your descendants. Verse 7, he said, I created you for my glory. Then verse 11, he said, I, even I am. Did you see that? I, even I am. That got me. Sister Eustace, that, that got me. He said, I, even I am. What is he saying? Well, he said, all of me. I, even I am. The, the fullness of the Godhead. That's what he's saying. Even I am. I, even I am. And that, that, thing, I, I, that thing just took me out. He said, I got the fullness of God on your side. Hallelujah. I, even I am. Verse 2 says, God himself, he affirms himself as the creator, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the redeemer, the life God. Oh, yeah, I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. He said, there is no other savior but me. I'm God the Father. I'm God the Son. I'm God the Holy Spirit. With me, there is no other savior. He said, when you pass through the waters, the rivers, and the floods, they will not overflow you. Hmm. Have you ever felt like you were drowning, but there was no water? Felt like you were drowning, but there was no water. I need a life jacket. Lord, throw me a life jacket. 
Drowning in the sea of sorrow, throw me a life jacket. Drowning in the sea of despair, throw me a life jacket. Drowning in the sea of negativity, Lord, throw me a life jacket. Drowning in the sea of financial disaster, throw me a life jacket. God will come and reaffirm himself, affirm himself through all of that. Through all of that, he affirms himself. God will affirm himself. Hallelujah. That he will see you through. He affirmed me, said he'll see you through. He'll get you to the other side. Come, let us go to the other side. Come, let us go to the other side. But there's a storm out there, master. But come, let us go to the other side. I will get you to the other side. I will get you to the other side of 2023. If you hold his hand, he's going to get you through. Hallelujah. Have you been in the fires of Satan grip? About ready to throw in the towel. Ready to compromise at any relief. But hold on to his hand. He's going to get you to the other side. Don't compromise. Don't look back. Don't compromise. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? In our culture, we say Shadrach, Meshach, and the big Negro. <laughs> Shadrach, Shadrach, Meshach, and the big Negro. They were walking in the fire. They were walking through the fire. That when you walk through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither the flame kindled kindle upon thee. And the king looked in the fire. He said, I thought we threw three in. But, we, but there are four in the, in the first and the fourth look like the son of God. Shadrach, Meshach, and the big Negro. Walking through the fire. It's not even burning them. Because God is with them. God affirms himself through the fire. God will affirm himself. Hallelujah. So get God on your side. And if you just need a big Negro, come get me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray with you. Thank you, Lord. God affirms himself. His, his, his presence in your life. He will show up. He will show up. And he will show out. He will show out. He's a present help in time of trouble. Verses 11 and 12. Said, be still and know that I am God. I even I am the great I am. I am he that proclaims. I am he that declares. Before the day was, I am. I am he that saves. Before time was, I am. I am the omnipotent one. All power is in my hand. I am omniscient. I, I see all. I know all. I, I'm not present. I'm here. I'm there. I'm everywhere. I am that I am. I am. Hallelujah, John. Hallelujah, God. Are you connected to the great I am? You got to understand this, that you came out of the mind of the I am. You came out of the mind of the I am. God is doing it, and the devil can't stop it. God is doing it, and the devil can't stop it. Because you came out of the great mind of the I am. God is doing it, and the devil can't stop it. Philippians 1.6 tells us that's why I'm confident in this one thing. That he that began a good work and you were able to complete it until the day of Christ. God is doing it and the devil can't stop it. You are his workmanship, created for good works, which is predestined for the beginning of time. God himself, he affirms himself. Moving on through. Expect mighty wonders, signs, and miracles beyond reasoning. First of all, understand this. If you can explain, explain a miracle, it's not a miracle. If you can explain it, it's not a miracle. If you give a reason for a wonder, it's not a wonder from God. Because God is mysterious. He'll show you something. He'll do something and make your head spin. He does something to make you run up out of here and say, thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord. He expects, expects miracles. Anybody expecting a miracle today? Anybody expecting a miracle today? Are you expecting something from the Lord? Are you expecting God to do anything in your life? I tell you, I walk in expectancy. You got to walk in expectancy. Brother Mickey, every time I go to my mailbox, I'm expecting God to show up. Every time I open my mailbox, I'm expecting, even if it don't, I'm still expecting the next day. I walk in expectancy. Every time I move in a different direction, I walk in expectancy. I expect God to meet me. Whatever situation I'm in, I expect God to be in the midst of it. If you draw near to him, he'll draw near to you. Right? You got to walk in expectancy. 
Hallelujah. He so expect mighty one of the signs and the miracles. If you walk, you have to walk in the spectacle, and Jesus will show up. Hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Every day I walk in the expectancy, expecting Jesus to manifest himself, manifest himself in every situation. Tell your neighbor, I'm expecting Jesus. Tell your neighbor, I'm expecting Jesus. Are you expecting Jesus? I'm expecting Jesus. Here's what I got to tell you about this story. When I was younger, back in Dallas, me and my younger friend, we used to go to our service, and after service, we still wanted some more words. So we went to a church later that evening, and this young man was preaching on expecting Jesus. And he told this story. He said he went to the store, one of the department stores, to buy his wife some perfume. He said while he was shopping, this little cutie pie, he called it a cutie pie, behind the counter, just trying to get his attention. He's annoying her. She's doing everything to get his attention. He come, he's expecting Jesus. He just come to get some cologne. She's doing everything to get his attention. He just ignoring her till she couldn't take it no more. So she asked him, say, are you gay? He said, no, I'm married. And I'm expecting Jesus. I'm married. And I'm expecting Jesus. Why does Jesus show up and I'm pushing up on you? I'm expecting Jesus. I'm married and I'm expecting Jesus. Jesus can show up any time. Help us, Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. I'm married and I'm expecting Jesus. Mm. How many of you know that and believe that Jesus is still in the miracle, miracle working business? God is still in the miracle working business. Salvation is a miracle. You know that. You being here in God's presence is a miracle. You know that, right? I know that God can do Anything. Again, he will do something that make your head spin. He says in verse 19, he said, I will make a, a river in the wilderness. Otherwise, he, he said, I will make a road, I'll make a path. You will have a path to follow. He will give you a road in your darkness. And in your dark place, you still have a light to go through. Like, like uh, Psalm 119, verse 105, verse 105. Thy words are lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. He said he'll make a river in the desert. <laughs> a river in the desert. Guys, understand what that means. Understand what that means. A river in the desert. Where, where, where it stands, it's going to be a time of refreshing and a time of refreshment. A time of refreshing and refreshment. Have you been in a dry place before? I've been in a dry places, but he said there's going to be a time of refreshment and refreshment. And when I read that, I couldn't help but look back on Acts 8 when the, when, when the uh, Ethiopian... The, 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 the eunuch was coming through. Here comes Philip. He said, he's reading. And he says, understand what thou reading. He said, how can I if I have an interpreter? And, he, and Philip explained everything. And he asked, he said, what hindered me from being baptized? They're in the desert. In the desert, right? Gaza, the desert. And all of a sudden, some water shows up. God would make a river in the desert. Hallelujah. No more dry places, church. No more dry seasons. So I got to tell you this other story. When I was younger again, and I began to preach, my first preaching time, I'm in school, and they told me we got to come with all these different kind of illustrations. As we be doing practice preaching, got to have some different illustrations. I said, man, how can I get an illustration? They said, you, there's illustration all over the place if you really look. So I was sitting in the park one day. I was sitting there, and let me ask you this question. Have you ever seen a bird bait? You ever seen a bird bait? So I was sitting in the park one day, and this bird flies out the air, he gets some water. I'm watching him. He dip, he dab, he's shaking off. Dip, dab, shake it off. And then he take, take off soaring. And, I, and then the Lord said, well, see, Mike, that bird is flying through the air. So much debris, so much dirt, his wings get heavy. He has to come and clean his wings so he can soar. So I thought about us. We in this world, we're full of debauchery, foolishness, mess, all kinds of sin and malice. We walking in this world and we dipping and dabbing in sin, dipping and dabbing in sin. 
that we need to bathe out. Oh, somebody needs to take a bath in here. Somebody needs to take a bath. Take a bath. Take a bath in the word of God. How can a young man cleanse his ways unless he bathed in the word of God? Take a bath. I ain't talking about the funk stink. I'm talking about the stink of sin. Take a bath. Take a bath in the word of God. Then you can soar. Then you can soar. Help us, Holy Ghost. Help us, Holy Ghost. You want to see some miracle? Take a bath in the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In verse 20, let me know. I'm jumping. I don't want to get too far here. Oh, here he is here. Take a bath. Take a bath. How can a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed to the word of God. Bathe yourself in the word. Bathe yourself in the truth. Bathe yourself in wisdom. Take a bath in the word of God. Mm. He said he give you water in the wilderness. No more dry places. No more dry seasons. I'll give you water in the wilderness to give his people drink. My chosen people. He called you chosen. In other words, your wilderness experience is over. No more dry places. God is doing a new thing in your life. New thing in your life. Get ready for that new thing. You haven't chosen me. I have chosen you. I redeem you. You've been redeemed by God. Jesus said, if any man thirsts, let him come after me, and I will give him water. Hallelujah. So if you want a successful, victorious 2023, you have to look to Jesus for the fountain of living water. Look to Jesus, the word of God, amen, and drink from the water freely. Mm. Verse 16. He said, I'll make a way in the sea. I'm going to wait in the sea. So give me another story. <sighs> Have you seen the movie Perfect Storm? Perfect Storm is a good movie. At the end of that storm, they done, Mark Weinberg, Wahlberg, and George Clooney, they done went out too far. There's a storm ahead of them and a storm in back of them. So they turn around and try to get out. They pushing, they pushing, they pushing it, and they say, George Clooney realized, he said, it's not going to let us out. It's not going to let us out. It's not going to, and that's how you feel sometimes, that Satan's not going to let you out. So you push and push, and say, it's not going to let them out. But you watch that movie, it says it swallow the ship up. And I'm going to tell you now, when God is doing a new thing in your life, and God is getting ready to do a miracle in your life, no storm is going to swallow you up. No devil or demon is going to swallow you up. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Help me, the Holy Ghost. He'll make a way in the sea. What manner of man is this that even the seas and the wind obey him? No river or sea is going to swallow you up. Be it a sea of liars, they're not going to swallow you, swallow you up. Be it a river of agitators, they're not going to swallow you up. Be it an ocean of naysayers, they're not going to swallow you up. Expect wonders, signs, and miracles. Hallelujah. In verse 8, hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Hallelujah. Verse 8, he said, bring out the blind people who have eyes. That got me. They got eyes, but they can't see. They got eyes, and they can't see. He talked about idols. He talked about, he talked about they, they got idols. They went out and they got themselves some idols. God that cannot see. God that cannot hear. Say, bring them out. They got eyes, but they cannot see. In other words, eyes, but you can't see spiritual things. Get rid of the idols. Get rid of anything that hinders you from seeing God. Anything that you put before God, get rid of the idols. You got eyes, but you cannot visualize the mountains I move. Get rid of the idols. You got eyes, but you can't see when I was a shield about you. He's saying, get rid of the idols. This world is going to put a lot of stuff before you, try to put a lot of stuff between you and God. But get rid of the idols. Don't let nothing block you and God. Block your view and vision of God. Hallelujah. Bring out those, the deaf that have ears but cannot hear. You cannot you couldn't hear my voice before, but now. You couldn't hear my voice before, but now. You couldn't hear my still, quiet whisper, I love you, follow me. Because of the idols, but now. Hmm. You could not comprehend through natural senses of hearing and seeing, but now. But now, I'm going I'm to show you how to see with your mind. I'm going to show you how to hear with your heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to show... I'm, I'm going to try how to heal with your heart. And Paul said, oh, that my eyes and my understanding be enlightened. Oh, that the eyes and my understanding be enlightened. Get rid of the idols. So when God is doing a new thing in your life, 
God doing a new thing in your life, the timing will be perfect. God will reaffirm his saints. God will affirm his faithfulness. Expect mighty signs and wonders. Let me give you the last thing. Mm. Are you getting anything out of this? Mm. God expect us to walk through his plan without fear. God expects us to walk through his plan without fear. He says in verse 5, fear not, for I am with thee. That's good news this morning. Fear not, for I am with thee. When you leave here, know that God is with you. Wherever you go, know that God is with you. You're never alone. As a believer, you're never alone. Jesus said, it's speaking that I go away, that the comforter will come. That the comforter will come. When he comes, he's going to lead you and guide you into all truth, into all things. He's going to dwell inside. So you're never alone. Hallelujah. You're never alone. I am with you. Fear not, for I am with you. Second Timothy, first, second Timothy 1, 7 says, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. Mm. Understand this, that you're probably going to encounter several things this year going to cause you to fear. We never thought we'd see anything like COVID-19, and some of us fear through that, but God got us through that, didn't he? Hallelujah. God got you through a lot of things, all right, right? So you're probably going to encounter several things this year that might cause you to fear. When you turn on your TV, you see all this junk and mess, kids killing kids. All this stuff, threats of terrorism. Donald Trump talking about running for president again. Fear not. Fear not. I knew I'd get a laugh out of that one. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You're going to count a lot of things that's going to cause you to fear. A lack of income, robbing people to pay Paul. But don't fear. Fear not. Wars. And rumors of wars, but fear not, God is with you. Amen. Understand this, that, that, that fear counsels faith, but praise counsels fear. Oh, I still got to praise on that. Fear counsels faith, but praise counsels fear. Praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in your house. Praise him in the school's house. Praise him in the White House. Praise him. Understand what fear is. Fear is false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. Fear not, for I am with thee. Praise him. Praise him in your dry season. Praise him in the wilderness. Praise him. Mm. Understand this. You can't praise him and be scared at the same time. You can't do it. You can't praise God and be scared at the same time. You can't do it. Mm. You was created for his glory. Understand in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit used to come upon a person when he was ready to perform a mighty act. But now you got the Holy Spirit in you. But now the Holy Spirit dwells and dwells you. And you should receive power when the Holy Spirit come up on you. You should receive power when the Holy Spirit come up on you. Power to overcome fear. Power to break through adversity. Power to praise in the midst of uncertainty. Power to call on the name of Jesus. He'll give you strength. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He'll give you power to call upon his name. Jesus. In the midst of your weakness, he'll give you power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You remember Samson at the end of his days, after he lost his strength because he was in Delilah's lap because of his lust. He said, Lord, if you just bless me one more time, one more time, God. The word says that God gave him power. He destroyed more fearless things in his death than in his life. God expects you to walk through the plan without fear. Walk through the plan without fear. Walk through the plan without fear. He won't give you the whole plan. But if you trust, he won't give you the whole plan, but trust that he will get you through the plan. Hallelujah. I'm almost done. Keep on walking in him, walking in his power, walking in his authority, walking in his anointing. Hallelujah. Walk in his anointing. You know, when you walk in, com in confidence, when you walk in confidence, sometimes you get a spring in your step. I don't know about you. When you walk in confidence, you can get a little spring in your step because I know who I am. I know whose I am. I know where I'm going. I'm going to glory, amen. I'm on my way to, I'm just passing through, amen. Right on, King Jesus, right on. No man is going to hinder you. So verse 19, as I close, he says it's going to spring forth. Shall you not know it? It's going to spring forth. God is doing a new thing this year. It's a new season. It's, 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 it's a new season in your life. A new thing is coming your way. 
It's time for you to come into your season, children of God. Hallelujah. Time for you to spring forth. He said, spring forth, DLA, spring forth. You are my witnesses. Spring forth in this church, new ministries. Spring forth disciples. Spring forth the pool of baptism in this ministry. Spring forth preachers and teachers and pastors and missionaries for the kingdom. Spring forth prayer warriors. Spring forth. There's gifts inside of you. There's gifts inside of this church. God is saying, spring forth, spring forth, that your gift will make room for you. And when you spring forth with God, you can sing a new song. You can walk in a new way. You, 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 your, your talk is new. Hallelujah. So make 2023 20, your harvest season. You spring forth. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we thank you. Thank you for who you are and what you're doing. So when God's doing a new thing in your life, again, the timing of God would be perfect. God will affirm his saints. God will affirm his faithfulness to accomplish all that concerns you. Expect mighty wonder, signs, and miracles beyond reasoning. And God expect you to walk through the plan without fear. Are you with me? Amen. Did you receive that? Yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody give God some glory. Lord, we expect that new thing, God. We expect that new thing, God. Old things are passed away, Lord. Behold, all things will become new, God. Lord, we don't know what this year is going to bring, but we know that you know. You already got it mapped out for us, God. We just want to walk through it without fear. We don't know what's going to come this year, Lord, but we know that you are there. You are our God. You are our King. You are our Savior. You redeemed us. You called us. You made us for your glory. That's our desire. That's our desire. To give you glory, to give you praise, to give you praise, God, to glorify your name throughout all the earth, God, is our desire. We look to that new thing, God. We don't want to go back to the oldness, Lord. We want to be refreshed, renewed. Always, Lord, Lord, we know that challenges are going to come. There's going to be hills, there's going to be valleys, there's going to be mountains, God. But you're with us through it all. And we thank you. And we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Thank you, oh, in Jesus' name. Yes. Hallelujah. Let's let that sink in a minute. You read that text. It said, I form you. I created you. I honor you. I love you. I call you. I chose you. You didn't choose me. That your name was written before the foundation of the earth. You just got to walk into it. You got just got to realize who you are. Again, you can't continue to dip and dab in this world, in this world of sin, in and out with God. Lord, I'm going all the way with you. I'm going all the way with you, Lord. I know you're a miracle worker. You said it, and I believe it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that new thing. Hallelujah. He's not going to let you go, church. He's not going to let you go. He's not going to let you fail this year. He's not going to give up on you. And don't you dare give up on him. We don't know what this world's going to bring. We see darkness everywhere we go. Every time we turn on the TV, every time we walk outside. Darkness all around us. But he's still the light of the world. And you still the salt of the earth. Hallelujah. Give him praise.